Well, hello, Golden Eagles. Jim Call here in Siena Hall, a place where young businessmen and business women are educated and young entrepreneurs are inspired. And today, I'm talking with Sheena Allen, who's a young entrepreneur, a 2011 Southern Miss alumna who's found great success in technology. Her third app was downloaded 500,000 times in just three months. And today, Sheena's using her expertise in technology to connect underserved populations to business opportunities and financial literacy information. So we're going to talk to Sheena a little bit about her Southern Miss experience, a little bit about what she's up to today, and maybe even give young entrepreneurs a tip or two. So I really hope you enjoy Sheena Allen's Southern Miss story. Well, hi, Sheena. Hello. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Well, thank you for having me. So uh, for those of you, those are people out there who don't know you, tell, tell us a little bit about Sheena. So I am from Terry, Mississippi, a little small town outside of Jackson, so in central Mississippi. Um, grew up there. Um, have seven siblings, so it's a lot of us, and uh, came to USM in 2007, so I'm actually an alum of, of Southern Miss. And after graduation? <sighs> Crazy enough, when I was actually at Southern Miss, I double majored in psychology and film, but my senior year while I was here, I actually had this idea for an app, and um, no background in technology in any way, but I fell in love with the idea of like creating this app. and. My senior year was the start of a company called Sheena Allen Apps. And it was mainly like these photo and video type applications. So actually when I left Southern Miss, I gave myself one year. I said, if I don't find success in this tech thing, I'm gonna go to grad school. And within that year, I put out my third app and it did about a half million downloads in three months. And so that company took me from Mississippi to Silicon Valley and it's where I really started my journey into the tech world. So finish the sentence for me. Southern Miss is? Life-changing. I can honestly say for me it was life-changing. Because while most people, especially in the tech world, they go to like Stanford, they go to Harvard, I'm different. So when I'm in Silicon Valley, it's like, no, where'd you go to school? I'm like, I went to Southern Miss. Probably nobody else we went to Southern Miss. Because when you come from somewhere, you're different from everybody else, everybody looks at you twice. They give you like that second look. My thing has always been if they're gonna give me, a, if they're gonna look at me twice, I'm gonna give them something to look at. And it was also a blessing because I went to Southern Miss, I learned a lot by being here, and it was a perfect way for me to come back and do a beta, a start capway, not only in my home state, but also where I went to school at. And, and tell me about your new company then. What are so you doing? So, new company is Capway. Um, and Capway is a financial technology company, and we focus on the financial health um, of people who are underserved or not certain about what's going to happen in their financial future. And so, the, it's mobile first. And so we call ourselves a two-sided coin. So one side is financial education, and we do everything from like uh, daily content of like very short videos, articles, money facts, and then we also do programs. And those programs are with partnerships, I mean through partners, and those partnerships include schools, other financial institutions, uh, employers, and then community-based organizations. The other side of the app is more so about financial services. And that's where we allow you to either link an account if you have an existing account, if you're unbanked, we allow you to create an account within the Capital application. And ultimately what our app does is through machine learning, it's a machine learning algorithm, we take your financial literacy along with your financial behavior and your financial data, and we create a financial health score for you. And with that score, we work with you to really increase your financial health, whether that's through getting an asset, you know, pulling you away from stuff that your wants versus your needs, um, and so the app is truly about increasing the financial health um, of people who, you know, are using like payday lenders, check cashing, really participating in the predatory economy or just looking for a better way to get out of, you know, going to overdraft fees or too so many bank fees. Uh, it's just once again increasing their financial health. So I, I've heard you speak about this topic before that's led you to this app. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about your passion for this? Uh, I get the sense that it's not just an app for you. Right. It's it's very purpose driven and very. Oh, without question. It's a question. passion of yours. Tell, tell me about why that is. Um, you know, I I start this social impact company. We're for profit, so we're not a nonprofit. We are for profit, but I started this social impact company because it was something that was close, really close to me. It was kind of personal. So growing up, um, a lot of my family are considered low income. You know, they live in trailers and they've used check cash in places and payday lenders. So growing up, I knew that world very well, of people being unbanked, underbanked, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And when I left the state, it was an entirely different world when I'm in Silicon Valley. I stayed in Austin for a while. So I 
the company that I was around at that point, these are multi-million dollar, you know, entrepreneurs or even they own like multi-billion dollar companies, which is called unicorns. And so, you know, everywhere I saw was banks. I didn't see payday lenders and check cashing places. But I remember coming back home to Mississippi to visit family for, you know, the holidays. And I noticed that my friends and my family and people in my community, they were still going to check cashing places and they were still cashing checks at the grocery store. And I, I've seen technology just disrupt or change industries for the better. And I was like, there has to be a way, because I was an entrepreneur now. I was like, there has to be a way that I can use technology, what I love, to disrupt that predatory economy and give not only my family, but people that I know in the exact same position, um, a much better, a brighter financial future. And so that was really the start of Capway. It really started out of really trying to change something for the better. So what was it like uh, get, just getting started out in the tech world? It was expensive when I got to Silicon Valley, that's for sure. Um, but even when I first started, I didn't know much at all. Um, unfortunately, at the time, Mississippi didn't have any form of like infrastructure for technology. So I couldn't go to like some tech company and say, hey, can I intern for you? Or can I work here for a while? Because there was nothing like it in the state. And so that was, it was kind of difficult because I feel like I didn't have anybody that could help me. Um, so I learned a lot through trial and error, but I will say that all those lessons through trial and error actually helped me in the long run. So w what do you hope the end of the journey is for you? What you how are you going to measure the success of Capway? You know, I, I, I get asked that question a lot, and I, I always say that I don't, I never define, as long as I'm living, I will never define anything honestly as su success. I honestly, I measure it almost like I, I achieved a milestone. I think success to me equates to my legacy. And honestly, people can say what they want their legacy to be, but you really don't know until you're gone. So I make sure that I'm hitting milestones, I'm doing things that once I'm gone and once that legacy is there, people look back and say, she was successful, like she did A, B, and C. I mean, I won't know what it is, but I'm doing the groundwork now that I'm hoping that I, whatever is said is, is positive. What do you hope people will say? that she definitely changed a lot of things for the better. Um, there are three billion people in this world who do not have access to traditional banking alone. Um, will I be able to touch all three billion? No, but just to be able to change the lives of the next generation uh, when it comes to their financial future would be huge. And it's not even just the financial piece. Um, helping people get into being an entrepreneur or facing their fears, or even my first company, um, which is more like an arts, because one of my majors was, was film. So um, mindset, you know, I, my, my, my thing for me is mindset. If I can change somebody's mindset for the better, to me that's, I did a good job. What, um, what advice would you give young entrepreneurs maybe that are just getting into the tech world? It's uh, two things. Um, I always find mentors. Mentors are huge to the journey. I, I think I, I took 10 leaps forward when I finally started getting mentors. But at the same time, all advice is not the best advice. And sometimes you gotta kinda go with that, they call it the gut feeling. Um, and fear, I think a lot of people have this issue with fear. It's like, oh, do I quit my job? Should I start it? It probably won't work. Somebody probably told me it was a dumb idea. The first step is usually the hardest, but it's without question the most rewarding. And it's, I mean, the entrepreneur journey in general is, it's not easy. And I think if it was easy, everybody would do it. Um, there's a reason that most people have a nine to five versus being an entrepreneur. Sometimes you don't know where your next meal is coming from. I don't know where my next dollar is coming from, especially in those early days. But if you are truly passionate about it, all the hardships, all those lonely nights and the sacrifices, it's well worth it at the end of the journey. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk thank to us today. Thank you. Thank you. And I always like to conclude the interview with Southern Miss. To the top. <laughs>